Hey everybody, and welcome to our latest episode of Behind the Scenes. In last week's episode, we looked at the layer panel, all of the keyboard shortcuts for the layer panel. This week, we're gonna be looking at the active work area. And in the end, we're gonna bring it all together. I'm gonna to show you how you can use both the layer panel and your live action window to work super quickly and super efficiently. So before I even show you any of the shortcuts for the active window, the first thing I wanna do is go into Edit and Preferences, and here we're going to go into workspace. And the reason why is because by default, depending on the version of Photoshop that you're working on, the open document as new tabs, what this feature does is when you open up a new document or when you first open up Photoshop, it's going to either open it up docked to your actual window, or if you already have an active window, it's going to tab it into that particular window, which I find is just a nuisance of a feature. It rescales your windows. It changes around your UI. I don't like it personally, so I uncheck that. So I make sure that it's unchecked and then I click OK and now I'm good to go. All right, so as you can see here, I've got my painting over here on the right, scaled up a little bit larger, and I've got all of my image references over here on the left. When I wanna use my image references, this is generally how I'm going to work. Sometimes I can actually cut and paste my image references directly into my painting, but it infringes on the space of my drawing, so if you have the space, I generally prefer to work this way. Now, depending on the way you're working, you might want to zoom in really close and navigate your way around the drawing or just keep it like this. So the way to access these different screen modes is to hit the F key, F as in Frank. And the F actually stands for full screen. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your window is active. You can tell because the lettering here is whiter than the other ones over here. You can see these are grayed out. And once you've got that active, you're going to hit the F key. The first time you hit F key, it's going to put you into full screen mode. Now, you'll notice that I can move this window around anywhere I want to. I'm going to show you the keyboard shortcut for that in a sec. If I want to go to full screen without the menus, then I hit F a second time. Now I've just got the raw full screen image that we can see here. And if I hit F a third time, it brings me back to windowed mode. However, Note that I can hide or show my, my UI at any time I want. Noting that the word UI means user interface, I can hide or show my UI at any time I want just by hitting the tab key like that. So if I'm in full screen mode and I hit the tab key, it's the same as being in full screen mode without the menus. Same thing. If I go into the full screen mode without menus, I can show my menus by hitting the tab key. So the fact that Photoshop continues to have this feature is just an extra button click that I find a bit annoying. but for what it's worth, you still have access to that. Now, when do I work this way and when do I work with full screen mode? Well, the advantage of working this way is, as I said, I have access to my image references and other windows. However, when I do go into full screen mode, I don't only have the option to zoom in a little bit closer and use up more of the real estate of my screen, but allows me to navigate into areas of my drawing that I normally wouldn't be able to access easily. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here in the window, if I want to get up close to something that's happening over here on this side of the image, and I zoom in, when I'm drawing, it's not a very, it's not a very practical way to draw because I'm drawing along this little corner over here. I'm really kind of wedged into the corner of my drawing. I'd rather be able to take that corner and center it for myself. So when I hit F for full screen, now when I want to zoom in, I can really zoom in and navigate around these areas and move the image where it's convenient for me rather than me having to readjust myself based on the crop of the image. So I can zoom in and move around. I can also, as you can see, scroll around the image like this. Something you can't do when you're in full screen mode unless you're zoomed in a little bit. But if I'm zoomed to its normal size, this isn't going to react because I, there's nothing to navigate around. So how did I do that? How did I navigate around? The first keyboard shortcut is just for navigating around your image. And the way you do that is by holding down the space bar. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Holding down the space bar and you'll see my cursor turns into a head. Now if I click and drag, I can move myself to whichever part of the image. Just click and drag like that. If I want to zoom in, I keep my finger on the spacebar and I add command or control to that. Control spacebar or command spacebar, like that. And you'll see my cursor is now turned into a little hourglass. If I click and drag, depending on where I click, I will zoom in or out of that particular area. So if I want to zoom right into the face, I hold down spacebar and command or spacebar and control, and I zoom right into the face. If I drag the opposite direction, I zoom out. And this becomes very second nature to you. So let's say I wanted to move and check out his foot. Well, I'll scroll down like this, 
and I'll zoom in. Now there's two other ways I can zoom in or out. One of the ways is by holding down Command and Alt or Control and Alt, and then use the plus or minus keys just to the right of your zero key up at the top. So if I hold down Command and Alt or Control and Alt, and I click the plus, I'm gonna zoom in in increments or zoom out in increments. I generally don't use this particular command when I'm in full screen mode. This is something I use when I'm in windowed mode. Why? Super practical, because I can rescale my windows. And it also zooms me in to the full image. Let's say I'm zoomed in like that. If I hit Control, Alt, and the minus button, notice it's also gonna take into account the actual document size itself. And this is how I organize my workspace, like that. So if I wanna take this one, I wanna zoom in, I wanna move it over here, zoom it out, move it into the place I want to, zoom it in. This is why I use Control, Alt, and the plus minus keys for that particular reason. Otherwise, I use the space bar and control. There's another way you can zoom in or out and navigate to a certain degree that I don't use as much because it requires you to use your mouse. And I'm generally using my pen. But what I can do is, let's say I'm zoomed in a little bit like this. If I use my scroll wheel, it'll move me up or down just, by de just depending on the direction that I scroll my wheel. If I hold down Alt while I'm doing that, you'll notice that it zooms me out or in, like that. It's a perfectly valid way of moving around, but like I said, I don't have my hand on the, on the mouse most of the time. It's usually on my pen, so it's not my go-to shortcut. Now, another keyboard shortcut that I learned that saved my life when I was working on the Disney show, because I would get these really, really complex scenes with hundreds of layers and stuff like that, that was done by somebody else. So I didn't know how they constructed the scene. I had to figure it out very quickly. Very often there were specific elements in specific areas that I needed to group along with others. So one of the things that saved my life was learning how to find objects in my scene very quickly without having to go and show and hide layers. Because some of these files I was working with had 200, 300 layers with specific items on each one. So there's no way in hell I would be able to work efficiently using that particular technique. Instead, you can actually locate something on your screen directly just by clicking on it. I can select something specifically to the pixel. So currently I'm on the purple layer, but I wanna find out where that cyan layer is. But it's embedded under all kinds of stuff. So while I'm in the move tool, V, I hold down the control key and I click on it. And notice it just found that layer for me. Same thing for the orange layer. Control and click on it, like that. This will save your life. Now if you combine this with the other modifier, Shift, Command Shift or Control Shift, you can select multiple layers that way. So I wanna select all of these color layers. I just hold down both of these modifiers and I click on each one like that. If I want to group it, control G. This is the shortcut that I showed you last week. There you go. So I've just grouped these four layers together and I never even had to go into my layers panel. Lifesaver, trust me on this one. I could also, if I wanted to, let's say I'm working on a drawing and I've got the character and I've got everything on separate layers. I just select all four of these layers and I do command or control E to merge them, just like that. In this particular case, I just wanted to delete them. So I'm gonna hit that trash can and skadoish. Off it goes. Now, while we're on the topic, I might also want to copy something. Now, there's many different ways you can copy things. I can copy things directly in my layers panel, like I showed last week. I can also copy things in my active window. So let me show you how we can do this. I'm gonna create a new layer. And on this, I'm going to create a box. So I hit M for the marquee tool. That's this tool up here. And I click and I drag and I create a box. I'm gonna fill it by holding down Alt and Backspace. Alt or Option and Backspace is going to fill whatever I have selected or the entire screen if I have nothing selected with my foreground layer. This is my foreground layer right here and this is my background layer right there. So I'm going to hit Alt and Backspace and it's going to fill it with this bright obnoxious pink color or magenta or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's bright. If I wanted to fill this with my background color, I would do Control or Command and Backspace. And notice that it filled with the background color. But in this particular case, I'm going to go with the bright magenta color because it's going to be a little bit more visible. And while I'm in the Move tool, V for the Move tool, I'm going to hold down the Alt key or Option, and I'm going to click and drag. And that automatically makes a quick copy of it. I don't necessarily have to click on the box itself. I can click anywhere on the screen as long as I'm on that particular layer. So I can click and drag and make copies even if my cursors anywhere. And notice just by clicking and dragging, I made very quick copies of everything. This is something I use 
religiously for multiple different purposes. However, I might not necessarily want to copy something and move it to a random location. Maybe I want to copy it and move it horizontally or vertical in a very straight axis. So the way you do that is to hold on Alter Option plus Shift. So that's going to allow me to click and drag in a straight axis. If I started my move going horizontally, it'll snap to the horizontal axis. If I just click and drag vertically, it's going to snap to that vertical axis. The other way I can copy and paste something is to just do a Control C or Command C and Command V. Problem is, it goes wherever it bloody well feels like going, unless I have it selected. So just like I showed last week, selecting the active pixels on a layer, I hold down the Control key and I click on that window. Now I've selected this particular area. And I do a Control C and Control V, and now it pasted it directly back into that selection box. Another important reason for selecting before I do a move is notice that when I made a copy, every time I made a copy, it created a new layer by default. If I don't want that to happen, if I want them to copy onto the same layer, first I make a selection around it. I used M for the marquee tool and now I can click and drag and make as many copies as I want and notice it's always going to copy but it won't create a new layer. Now just a little something you may have noticed is the fact that when I was clicking and dragging I had these little pink indicators with both measurements and guidelines as well. This is something new to Photoshop, I believe CC 2017 and 18. If you're working on an earlier version of Photoshop, you're not going to have this feature. And one of the reasons why this can be super practical is if you want to make multiple copies and translate them, meaning moving them in a horizontal or vertical axis, translating them at the same measurement each time. Let's say I'm doing fence posts or I wanted to make a storyboard or something like that and I want everything to be perfectly measured. The new version of Photoshop with these guidelines also keeps your last translation or transformation or whatever you did in the memory. So if I come in here and I just make a copy, notice it's giving me that 0.367 inches as a measurement. I can also change that to centimeters if I prefer. And if I do it again, notice it's going to remember that 0.367. There we go. And you notice when I did, it shows me that indication between the two things. Now when I let go, I know that I've made it an exact translation. This is something that saves a lot of time because if you're working on an earlier version of Photoshop, the way I used to do this would be to make a copy and then I would have to zoom in nice and close and I would take my marquee tool and I try to make a selection right to the pixel like that. Then I would fill it with a separate color, making sure I'm on another layer. Then if I wanted to make that same measurement again. I would take this, I would move it. In this particular case, it's set to snap. And I would make my selection and make a copy. And there you go. It takes a few more steps. If you're working on a version of CS6 or CS5, one of the earlier versions of Photoshop, that's probably how you're gonna have to do it. That's what I had to do back in the day. All right, let's take everything that we've learned today. I'm gonna create a thumbnail page, a thumbnail panel that I can use to work out a new drawing. I'm going to work in real time. It's going to go really quick, but I'll show you how I would normally work when I'm working in Photoshop once you get comfortable with these different shortcuts. So I've created a new document, Command or Control N to create a new document. And uh, I've set this to 1920 by 1080. It starts my page off white. Now I'm going to hit F for full screen because I prefer to work in full screen where I can navigate around. I'm going to create a new layer by just clicking on the little layer button at the bottom. I'm going to choose a medium gray and I'm going to fill this new layer with that color by hitting Alt or Option and Backspace. Create a new layer, go with a darker value, Alt and Backspace. Now I want to create panels that are 16 by 9 aspect ratio. That's going to be the size of it. Let's say I'm doing it for film or video games or something like that. So one of the tricks I like to do is to create a new layer, do Select All, Command or Control A, then I go into Select, Transform Selection, and now holding down Shift and Alt or Shift and Option simultaneously, I can scale this down towards the middle to a size that I like. And it's maintaining that 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And then I hit Enter. Then I'm going to make sure I'm on a new layer. And I'm going to choose any color that's noticeable. And I'm going to do Alt and Backspace to fill that selection. Now I'm going to make sure I hit V. And I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt or Shift and Option together. And I'm going to click and drag. And then do that a second time and it should snap to the right size. Then I do Command E, Command E, or Control E, Control E to merge down twice. Move it over to the side by holding down Shift, and I hold down Alt and Shift. Now that they're merged, it's gonna copy all three of those. And then one more time. And you can see it snaps to those perfect sizes. Then I select all three of them and do Control E. Then I hit Control again or Command, and I click on this little window, 
and then I go back on this dark gray layer and I hit the backspace key to delete. And I can go back on this original one, I hit the trash can key to delete that, then I lock this layer and I lock this layer as well because I don't want to actually physically draw on them. I hit B, then I use the right click button to select whichever brush that I want. I use the open brackets to scale the brush down to the size I want and I start to paint. And I can use the little alt button that I've set to my top mouse button to start to paint with it. Select another value in this case, I'm just doing a value sketch and I blend, I blend and I do my little thing just like this. I want to change my brush, right click, select a new brush and paint with something that has a little bit more texture on it. That kind of idea. There we go, and I keep blending. Right click, switch my brush. I want to go with a little bit more of a bristle brush, something like this, scale my brush up. So I want to just block in my layer and I paint. Let's say I'm happy with this thumbnail or I'm happy with this drawing. I want to do a backup of it and start something on a new layer. I hold down the Alt key and I click and I drag to make a copy of it. Then I hide that original layer. I click on the new layer and I keep on editing. This is usually what I do when I've reached a point in a drawing where I'm happy and I want to keep a safe copy and not destroy the good work that I've done. Now, I want to create a new layer, set it to overlay, select a color, and I want to paint some color on top of it. Let's say it's some color effect or something like that. Like this. And I want this blue color, like that. So now I've created a new layer and I want to add a bit of vignetting in the corner. So I want to set this layer to multiply, shift and the plus key. Make sure I've hit it to multiply like that. Usually I'll just click and drag and find it in the list like that, but in a, in just to demonstrate it, then I'm going to right click, select my nice soft round brush, go with a nice medium gray, and I'm going to add a bit of vignetting around the corners like this. Hit the eraser key, E, grab that same eraser just to clean it up a little bit. And I'm happy with these effects, but I don't want to accidentally select these effects all the time. So I'm going to select them like that. I'm going to hit Contro Controller Command G to group them and lock them. Now if I want to locate my drawing, I can hit Control and click on it, and it won't respond to those effects because I've locked those layers and they're no longer selectable. However, in this particular case, I've decided I'm happy with this drawing as it is, and now I just want to clean up the edges so that it doesn't bleed into the other panels. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to hit the M for Marquee Tool, make a quick selection, then do Command-Shift-I or Control-Shift-I to inverse my selection. That means everything that was selected is now not selected. It basically selects everything that wasn't selected. So Command-Control-I or, command, or Control-Shift-I, and you'll notice that now it's selected everything that's not selected. And I can go on these different layers, hit the Delete key. I can go in here, select these two, group them, lock them, and I'm good to go. And let's say I want to make this panel one, so I double click on the word, I call this test one, hit enter, and then I create a new layer, and I'm good to go into my next one. And I've done so extremely quickly and efficiently without even looking at my tool panel or anything like that. So, hopefully you enjoyed today's tutorial. Of course, if you want to up your game in concept art and illustration and digital painting, you can check out my private online mentorship, Lucid Pixel, all of the information below as well. And don't forget on my channel as well, I have painting tutorials, art talks, product reviews, mostly for artists, of course. So if you're into that kind of stuff, hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget to hit that little notification bell to know when I upload new videos. With that said, thank you very much for joining me, everybody, and happy painting. Take care.